How many people beneath these rules are struggling with their rent or mortgage? What happens when we just can't make those payments? What resources does Whitehorse have to offer people struggling with the cost of housing? When we can't afford the roof over our heads, where do we go? Charlotte Renchuk spent two years researching the report on women's homelessness in the Yukon. A little kindness would go a long way. After speaking with 66 different women about their problems with housing in the Yukon, she's eager to share their stories. One woman told me that a woman never really has to be homeless, that there's always a man who's willing to take her home. I found that very hard to take, the fact that in this day and age, the age of women's rights and supposed social security nets that women have to place themselves in these compromising situations when they don't really want to be living with this fellow but in order to have a roof over their head and a warm place to sleep that they have to compromise themselves. Other women told me about having to put their children in care because they, or farm them out to a variety of different relatives or friends because they didn't have a place for them to live and they were afraid that social services was going to take them away. Women were crying when they were telling me these stories of the things that they had done that they are ashamed of but needed to do in order to have a warm place to sleep so they don't have to sleep in some place like this at minus 30 degrees. Different people have told me that this is a spot where people will come women and men will come to sleep uh, when they have no place else to go and basically it's kind of a empty bunker, a concrete hole in the wall with nothing in it but at least it's out of the wind and I think it's really sad that there is no other place for people to go especially when it's cold like this. The women I spoke with really need and want and ask for an emergency shelter for women where women could go no matter whether they were drunk or stoned or had their children with them that would be safe and secure. They are asking for real affordable low income housing that is safe and decent. They were asking for rights as tenants so that if they complained about a problem with their place they wouldn't get evicted and be unable to find another place that they could afford. Talking with all the women was really, really difficult. It broke my heart, basically, that in our day and age in Whitehorse, which is a very wealthy city, where a lot of people have every material good you could possibly think of, that there are people who don't have enough to eat, that don't have the basic right of having a place, a decent, safe place to live. You know, when women would tell me uh, they were living in some place that has, doesn't even have a lock, on the door or they're finding needles on the kids playground in the neighborhood that they're living. I'm hoping that my report will spur action on all sorts of fronts, government, non-governmental organizations and simply among the general public, among the citizens of Whitehorse that they will realize that people who don't have a place to live are not beneath their care and that people won't be so judgmental and discriminate against women who are homeless. A couple of the issues that have led to me to being living out here is um, I just don't believe that people should have to pay rent. That uh, it's against my human rights, you know, to have someone else uh, um, make a profit off of people who are poor. It's the poorest people in our society who are paying rent. This tent is made from sheets and wool blankets. I got several layers of wool blankets. I'm poor, you know, I can't afford to live in a rent, in a rental situation anywhere inside the city of Whitehorse because I only work a couple hours a day and I'm going to school. I was living in Riverdale. I moved out because I couldn't afford to pay rent. Why I'm living here with no heat in the middle of February is because I'm not allowed to have a, a wood stove. Our society has set standards and rules and regulations that don't allow people in the city of Whitehorse who are poor to live within their means. Carrie would stay at the Salvation Army, but it is usually men who use the few available beds there. Because they cannot have women and men in the same room, when she stays in a room of four, three other beds must remain empty. For this reason, she would rather sleep out in the cold. 
Here we would stay at Koshi's place, but it is a shelter for women fleeing abuse, and she has not been abused. Their resources are stretched as it is. I, uh, I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I, uh, it takes me an hour to get dressed, because I have to bring all my clothes into the sleeping bag to warm up the clothes before I can get dressed. And uh, I start walking at 6 o'clock. I walk for an hour to town and uh, catch the bus downtown and go to school, get to school at 7.30. At the end of the day, I finish my work at 5.30 and because the City of Whitehorse buses have their supper break at 5.30, I don't catch the bus until 6.45. I catch the bus up and then I walk another uh, hour home. I don't get home till 8 o'clock at night. So, and then I have to start studying in the cold with no heat. We used to have a tent city. Why not have another tent city? There are people who can't afford, who are homeless, who are living absolutely nowhere, you know, have no place to put their possessions and sleeping out on the ground when, you know, there could be a better place for them. So that's one of them, is providing a space for us and allowing us to do what we need to do to survive and uh, not judge us for, for that. There aren't adequate resources at all. The social assistance rates are very low. Uh, they're not enough to keep body and soul together. The housing costs have risen drastically over the past several years in Whitehorse and area. There is no emergency shelter for women. Uh, the Salvation Army has 10 beds, but it's first come, first served, and there are far more than 10 homeless people looking for a place to sleep each night in Whitehorse. There just aren't enough facilities. Canada has signed on to all sorts of treaties like the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, which states that all women have a right to a safe place to live. They may have that right, but there's no, no way to fulfill it here in Whitehorse if you're on low income. Le ciel est noir, la lune ronde. Dors, dors, bébé, n'ouvre pas.